Welcome to Toffee TV. I am joined by an Everton legend, the man whose record has finally gone, the last man to score the winner at Anfield before Saturday. It is Super Kevin Campbell. What an honour to chat to you today. How are you, man? Baz, honestly, paid. I've got no peds behind the camera. He is. But I'm still buzzing. <laughs> I am still buzzing. It's been, it's been a long, long time coming. As it really has. Yeah. And, you know, anybody who knows me knows I wanted it to go the next year, <laughs> two years. So, listen, brilliant, brilliant performance and so proud. Yeah. I mean, Jamie Carragher said Kevin Campbell won't be too happy this, this record's gone. But... What does, hey, hold on, Baz. What does he know? <laughs> he don't speak for me. I, I, could, I could tell you this. I am absolutely delighted it's gone. And I'm yeah. so pleased it's gone. Well, there's new members in the exclusive club, Baz. Mm, Richarlison and Sigurdsson yeah. in the exclusive club. <laughs> there ain't many who have done that, you know, at, at no. Anfield. So, listen, I'm, I'm just delighted that the team won because I think it's an important point and an important hurdle to get over in the evolution of Everton. Because the rebuild is real now. You know, because the, all those things that hang over the team, they're knocking them down slowly but surely. So it's really important to to, to be Liverpool at, at Anfield. Definitely. I mean, I know that you're desperate for the um, the record to go because when you come in and done the podcast with us, you were saying it's it's been far too long. I want it gone. So uh, it's been too long till you've been in here, to be honest. But uh, you know what the world's like at the moment. But hopefully. Hopefully you'll uh, you'll be back in the studio sooner rather than later, and uh, we can have a good laugh. Um, just onto the game, then. Obviously, uh, going into it, obviously a lot of people saying, and we felt it. It was a good opportunity for Everton to break this because no fans being there and everything. But but there was that thing of Liverpool losing three own games on the run, and they wouldn't be four. So you know it wasn't as easy as what people. Can't, or, or it was a bigger deal than what people have made it out, I think, anyway, personally, from an Everton perspective. Yeah, Baz, I think the, the important part was you knew Everton had a, had, had a good chance. You know, look, whether we, like, whether we like it or not, they have got injuries. Mm -hmm. You know, both teams have injuries and they have to deal with it, but mm -hmm. some of their injuries are all in one position, which is centre-half and, and at yeah. the back. So, you know, we think to ourselves, well... If you can't, if we can't get at this lot, mm. then something's wrong. But yeah. we've said that before. They've played weakened teams at times, and and Everton just haven't turned up. So, you know, it's twenty-two years of pressure yeah. on this Everton on, on this Everton squad, mm -hmm. and uh, you know, it was it it was starting to show a little bit over the years. You know, Definitely. With, with Jordan Pickford incidents and all these kind of things, mm -hmm. it was it was painful at times, but. We knew we stood a chance, but you still got to go in there, and you still got to win the game. You still got to battle. You still got to deal with their their front players and midfielders and everything like that. Because you, you know as well as I do, Baz, that front three when they're on their one, they're on blob, could yeah. rip anybody apart. Yeah. In the Champions League midweek, they were ripping people apart. Yeah, true. You know, it's the same team who played in the Champions League and won convincingly. Mm. So. Everton had to defend well. They had to defend well and try and get in front. I thought Everton started the game really well. Hammers Rodriguez, there's obviously some people questioning sometimes about, you know, about getting stuck in, but that's not his game. No. His game is exactly what you saw with that pass. Touch and that sweet pass to Richarlison. Richarlison just played off the shoulder and bang. Right in the <laughs> I mean, well, brilliant. Absolutely brilliant. I mean, it was, it's really weird, isn't it? The last time we won there and you scored early on, I think your goal was four minutes in and the Charlison's is three minutes. And the picture, I saw the picture you put up of the two. And he, did you see him? He replied to you yesterday. Did you see oh, that? Brilliant. Yeah. Listen, it, it made my day. <clears throat> top, top. Listen, we know he's a, he's a top player. To yeah. take a little bit of time out to, to respond, it was, was first class, I thought. And... Uh, it really made my day yesterday. It was a nice it, touch. It's great as a supporter to see that, that, you know, interacting with you as well. Brilliant. But um, 
it was weird though because both both pitches are at the cop end as well. You know what it's like, and a real sim like a symbolic moment in the game. And you, to be honest, you were the first person I thought of when it hit the net. It was like he's done what he's done what Kev did. And, um... I was passing it. I was passing it. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> it, was, it was superb honestly yeah. it was super to, just to get the noses in front yes. and and then you could say well okay let's 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 keep the game plan now because yes. you've got something to hold on to baz exactly and, and for Evertonian, you could never sc- i know with mine it was maybe it scored too early but this <laughs> one wasn't too early it wasn't too early score get your noses in front and then see what they've got and Liverpool weren't breaking there in Everton no, uh, no. On, on Saturday evening. You just you mentioned it then for the from the Leipzig game up up against like Upper McCann and Pete and Canate and people like that at Leipzig, really good defenders. The, the, the Liverpool were through three, four, five times that night. And yet on Saturday, obviously Michael Keane, Ben Godfrey, Mason Holgate, Luca Dean, Seamus Coleman, all really had to stick to their task, didn't they? It's so difficult when you're under we haven't got a lot of the ball. You've got to con. You've got to concentrate, haven't you? Yeah, it's, and and it's constant pressure because mm. the way Liverpool play, they they win the ball back early, or yeah, yeah. when you clear your lines, it's going to them because yeah, they commit yeah. a lot of men forward. So yeah. the ball is keep is is coming back, and it's like if you switch off for one minute, you're in trouble. Yeah. But these are the levels that the Everton players have to do week in, week out, because we've seen, we know they can do it. Yeah. And this, is a, this was a great game to win, but you've got to do it against the Fulham at home. And you've got, you know, you've got yeah. to do yeah. it week in, week out. This is the standard. And we know they can hit the standard because they've kept the champions quiet at home and, and won the game in the Merseyside derby, which is brilliant. And yeah. deserve to win it as well, Baz. If I'm say so. Yeah, with the game plan, 100 percent I mean, what did you what did you make of Jordan Pickford's performance? A lot of people have, have questioned him at times, and he hasn't had a great time at Anfield in particular. But that save from Henderson set him on his way, didn't it? But Baz, I've questioned him at times, I've got yeah, to be honest, yeah, because you, yeah, you do yeah. you, listen, you watch you, you you say what you see. And a couple of years ago, you know, the mistake he made gave me one of the most difficult times in a football stadium. <laughs> Yeah. It was it was nil nil. Everton had done so well. And mm. my mate Red Nose John <laughs> absolutely give it to me when the goal went in right at the death. You know, yeah. you can yeah. imagine. And I'm, I'm surrounded by reds. So it was it was it was tough. But yeah. I think Jordan Pickford focused. He focused from when mm. he focuses himself, he's a he's a damn good he's a England's number one, he's a damn good keeper. So yeah. I think he owed us that performance and he owed himself that performance. It was outstanding, yeah. mistake-free, which really helps. And he kept yeah. a clean sheet at Anfield, which, you know, is, is always a, a sweet one. Yeah, oh, 100%. I mean, that's, that's all I kept saying to myself. Oh, please keep a clean sheet, please, because it's so important. Obviously, it meant we'd won the game, but it was so important anyway. Um, were you impressed with the way they did stick to the game plan? Even in the second half, it was... You know, the two banks of four, Richarlison up on his own. And I mean, how did you rate his performance, Kev? Because when you're up on your own, you've played that many a time. You don't see a lot of the ball sometimes, but you've got to be switched on as well to get hold of it and try to buy your team some time. Yeah, I, I thought he'd done really well. I really did. Because mm. um, what you've got to do, you've got to try and occupy all of the back four. <laughs> and you, you're one person, and you're one person to occupy all of the back four. You think, how do you do that? You've just yeah. got to try and be busy. You've got yeah. to try and get yeah. hold of that ball when it comes. Get a free kick here and there. Buy, give the defenders a rest. Give the midfielders a bit of time to move up the pitch. Then you can yeah. go from there. That's what you've got to do. I thought he'd done that great. Mm. Obviously scored yeah. after yeah. three minutes, which, hey, it's a great opportunity. Put it away. First chance with a fantastic boy, boy yeah. by Rodriguez. Yeah. But I, I, again, I thought he, he played, he led the line really well. It's yeah. difficult yeah. because he's isolated, but he yeah. put a shift in and then obviously yeah. he got yeah. some proper relief when DCL came on in the yeah. second half and yeah. Siggy came on. Yeah. He gave us a bit yeah. more legs there as well. And, and we look, we, I, thought we, I thought we won it at a canter. Honest with you, mm. in the end. I mean, how, 
how good was the second goal? Because obviously Dominic come on and, and really started putting himself about winning headers, you know, getting testing their two centre backs. But the goal itself, well, the penalty, what led to the penalty, great ball out from Tom Davis, lovely spin by Richarlison, and then Dominic Calvert losing, turning into a, a train, running through and and people have told me it wasn't a penalty, but I, I, I mean, don't know what game. That, uh, no, we must be no. watching different games. Honestly, uh, we must be watching different. It, it. My answer is: if Trent Alexander Arnold isn't there, does Dominic Calvert Lewin score? The goalie's laying on the floor. The ball's free. He's got a tap in. Why would he go down? I mean, it, just to clarify, Kev, was it a penalty for you? One hundred percent. It was a penalty. <laughs> 100%. <laughs> and listen, and, and if it wasn't, I would say, oh, you know what, I'm, I'm a bit dubious. Mm -hmm. it, it wasn't even, it wasn't even, it shouldn't even have gone to VAR. No. Nah. Well, they've said he went to it whether to send them off, didn't he? That's what they've said. I don't know whether that's I, I don't but... think so. I think because, yeah. Yeah. because Trent Alexander-Arnold made an attempt, a tackle, mm. that's yeah. why he stays on the pitch. That's why he gets a yellow. Yeah, he didn't right. make an attempt and, and brought him down. Then mm. obviously it's a red. Yeah, it yeah, was yeah. it was a stonewall penalty for me. And obviously because of the VAR check and all that, Sigurdsson's got time to think. Then hasn't he? So how how cool a penalty was it? Well, the, look, the referee helped because he did. He didn't take him. Long. No, yeah. <laughs> so, no, he didn't take him. Long <laughs> the night was a penalty. Just had a look yeah. at it right. He's straight. Let's away. go. Yeah, that was go. good. Yeah. But you know it's the, the pressure, and he rolled in, no yeah. fans. Yes. You know the, the the pressure's on Siggy, but he mm. dispatched it beautifully, didn't he? It was yeah. clinically yeah. done, and 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 two nil. I, I thought was about right, if I'm honest. Mm. Liverpool huffed yeah. and puffed, and you know you have to defend well. But I thought Everton were were, were superb defensively, yeah. and yeah. they they look more of a threat when it mattered. Yeah. I mean, Sigurdsson almost almost made it 3-0 with a worldie right at the end. But um, it was a great performance. What have you made of um, Ben Godfrey this season, Kev, coming into the side? Really like him. Looks like looks to me. I've seen him, I've seen him play multiple positions. Mm. Um, looks like he really takes pride in his, his work. Wherever he plays, he puts a shift in. Yeah. yeah. And he's got, that, he's got that mentality. He's not going to get beat. You know, he's got that tough, yeah. tough mentality that yeah. you have to have. Yeah. And, you know, I, I, I like his work ethic. I like his mentality, like I say. And I like the fact that he's flexible enough to play in multiple positions. So, yeah, he's he's one that's going to be in and around that first team for a long, long time. Yeah. And um, yeah. Uh, I think he's, he's going to have a big career at Everton. Yeah, he's been he's been absolutely fantastic. So as a as a performance at Anfield, I mean it it was a it went to plan perfectly for Carlo Ancelotti, didn't it? Um, what have you made of Everton this season? Because obviously we're doing really well. There's 14 games to go. They're still in a, with the shouts of the Champions League. Um, it's a strange season anyway. So what have you made? What have you made of Everton? Uh, I think Everton have made definite progress this season. The, mm. the, always the issue for me. Baz was you 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 put the you took the Cortina engine out and you put the Rolls Royce engine in with Allen, the Corey and Jaime Rodriguez. Yeah, well, obviously yeah. with Gomez chucked in there as well. You know you've got your Rolls Royce engine. Yeah, but it's when yeah. the, when those players don't play, mm. the likes mm. of Tom Davis, yeah. could he step up yeah. to the mark? You know, I think he's he's been superb. Yeah, he really has. Yeah. He's improved as a player. Yeah, and you yeah. need that. Alan's not there. You need somebody to step in. Tom Davis has been superb, and there is a there is a transitional period that of landmarks that this team have to get over. Yeah, for instance, yeah, in the FA Cups in, in the FA Cup game against Spurs, that is a big hurdle to get over. Extra mm. time against Spurs who have a great record at Cuddison Park. Yeah. yeah. Keep yeah. pegging Everton back, but you beat them. You know, yeah. Everton win the game. Yeah. Great. Yeah. Then midweek, what Everton don't have is the opportunity to be able to say, right, I'm going to change five of the front six players. Yeah. And then you've got the energy from the top end where you could keep the back end similar.
Yeah, yeah. But yeah. you've got the energy to break the ball and hunt the ball in front of you. Defenders have yeah. an easier day. Have that. Yeah. The team no. looked late. No. They looked two yards off it against Fulham. And, and, and that's yeah. the thing that you're battling against. The squad is all okay, but it's not there yet. So that's yeah, going to yeah. take time. But Carlo Ancelotti, no, trust me, he knows. You don't need me to tell him. <laughs> Dunk knows as well. Yeah. When when you are when you are moving in the right direction and you are going to be challenging. When we move into that brand new stadium, the squad has to be in place. Yeah. Two players Definitely. in every position. If you need to change six players or seven players, you can change them and the team won't be any weaker. That's yeah. the key. Yeah. And yeah. it's it's getting there. But you know, Everton have a Everton have a big chance. What fourteen games to go? If, if you told me this at the start of the season, Baz, fourteen games to yep. go, we just have beaten them in the derby two 0 <laughs> You take it, wouldn't you? Oh, level up points, shadow. level up yeah. points as well. Yeah. You take that. Yeah. Oh, 100 percent. And there's an opportunity there. Europa League. I mean, Europe is a big thing for Everton. It'd be great, be fantastic to get in the Champions League monetary wise and being able to strengthen the squad, but. Even a Europa League for Everton, just to keep that momentum going, you know, and, and move the club on another level. Yeah, I, I think the Champions League might be a little bit too much of a stretch at this time because we're, we're, we're seeing good performances and then the switch flicks off and then Everton yeah. don't perform yeah. in a game yeah. and get beat by a lesser yeah. team, kind yeah. of. So, yeah. you know, obviously, if they address that in the last 14 games, they have a chance. Mm. But there's a, a there's a lot of teams who are probably a little bit further along the line who are going to be coveting those those Champions League spots. If mm. Everton make Europe, I think mm. it's it's been a great it's been a great season. Yeah, to be able to yeah. progress in the FA Cup, that's the that's the yeah. that that's the one. But what yeah. that Liverpool yeah. result could do is galvanise the team because whoever they play, whoever comes in their way. Can they win on the day? Yes, they can. Yeah. It's all about yeah. game plan. And if you stick to the game plan and you could defend properly, you have a chance. You, yeah. Against anybody, you yeah. have a chance. So yeah. fingers crossed Everton yeah. could, could uh, perform on the, on the day. Yeah, you never know. I mean, City have just come and beat us, but we'll hopefully have Alan back, like you've said, and Dominic Calvert-Lewin fully flying again. And, and who knows on the day if we defend properly? Why not? You know, listen, not? Arsenal. Arsenal beat them in the semi-final of the cup last season. Yeah, Arsenal never yeah. had a chance. People never gave Arsenal a chance. No. Arsenal defended properly, no. and they caught them on mm. the break, similar to what Everton done to Liverpool. That's what sometimes. Yeah. That's what you have to do. You have to make it a little bit ugly, but you've got to. Yeah. You know, the players have got to know when we get our chance to break and hurt them. You've got to take it. And you know, Everton are learning. They're learning very quick under Carlo Ancelotti. Yeah, it's, it's all going really well. Um, let me just talk to you quickly about Dominic Calvert-Lewin because I know when you come in and, and done the podcast, we had a good conversation about him and you were saying that when you'd seen him, you were saying to him, get in the box. You're doing all your work outside the box. Well, this season, it seems that's exactly what he's done, Kev. He's, he's been great between the, the two posts. 100%. He? And I think Big Dunk, I'm sure Big Dunk is, is really mentoring him. Um, behind the scenes mm. because he's a changed player. He's yeah. a changed player, Baz. Yeah. And, and and let's have it right now. Not only is he a changed player, he's an England international, full England international and scored goals and, and he's Everton's number nine, which is fantastic. Yeah. That's what we want. We don't yeah. want him doing his work in the channels no. too much because of no. the way Everton play. He needs to be in the box. That's where he's going to mm. get his goals and he's proven now he can score in bunches and he can score regularly. So... You know, fair play to the young man. Uh, he's done. He's done fantastically well. I think he's only going to get better because mm. he's he's young enough to learn more, yeah. and he will. Yeah. What What does he, in your opinion, what does he need to do better to to improve? Uh, I, I think he needs to. Uh, he needs to hunt space a little bit more on the shoulder of the centre halves, um, mm. because it's all it's great when he's he's back to goal all the time. Sometimes when you're, when the team need an outlet, sometimes the outlet isn't playing it into you. Sometimes it's over the top. You've got to yeah. stretch the pitch. 
Yeah. So I'd like to see him hunt space a little bit more, work yeah. on his runs, yeah. and then you, then defenders won't know how to handle him. Because no, no. You, you go tight and he'll spin you, and yeah. he'll run you over the top. Yeah. If, yeah. You, if you, if you yeah. lay off him, he'll bring the ball down and bring others into play. Yeah. That's the yeah. perfect centre forward for you. Because he's fantastic in the air, isn't he? His leap is unbelievable, yeah. isn't it? He's tremendous yeah. in the air. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, we saw for the penalty at the weekend, the pace of him, he, he gave Liverpool's defenders five yards and beat them by five yards. So he can do that over the top, well, he's, can't he? He's an ex-winger. And wingers like mm. obviously like to know mm. that they can use their speed. Mm. But playing as a, a striker, it's a different discipline. So your runs and your thought process have to be a little bit different when you play yeah. number nine. But mm. he can outstrip a lot of defenders in this league. He's quick, he's fast, mm. he's strong. Mm. So, yeah. I mean, when you've got James Rodriguez in that midfield, get on your bike, <laughs> DCL. I'm telling you, because he, he, could, he could thread a needle from 10 yards. Yeah. Get on your bike, because yeah. Yeah. he will find him. He yeah. really will find him. I think there's more goals in Dominic Calvert-Lewin, hunting space as well, um, if he can master that. You know, when you look at Everton and you see strong defensively, at the, because our best performances have been away from Goodison Park this season, a lot of strong defensive performances. Do you see a way that we could have Richarlison and Dominic Alvaluin closer to each other with Hammers behind and still maintain that defensive? Do you think they might be better as a two? or Because Richarlison seems to love playing as a centre-forward as well. You know why he loves playing as a centre-forward, Baz? Because that's where the goals are. That's <laughs> yeah. where the goals are. Yeah. Any, any forward, yeah. any striker, yeah. you want to play in the middle. Because yeah. when yeah. you're wide, you're a bit yeah. out. You, you, yeah, you know, yeah. you hit it and he's he's good with both feet and he's good mm. in the air as well, Richarlison. Mm. We've seen, we've seen yeah. them play as a two. Mm. In a four, four And be two, very yeah. effective. Mm. I don't think Carlo mm. Ancelotti wants to do that because I think he wants to control possession a bit. Mm. But I, I think at home sometimes you can change the formation to a 4 1 mm. 4 1. So you could have one up front, yeah. but you got four just behind. So Richarlison could be, yeah. you could have Richarlison and Hammers Rodriguez just behind. You could have mm. whoever a little bit wider, the core with Richarlison yeah. as one of the wider players, but mm. coming in. They've mm -hmm. got license to go where the defense don't want them to go, so I think I think there's yeah. opportunities to get with Charleston in in a bit more inside closer yeah. to Dominic Calvert Lewin yeah. for sure. Yeah, because we just that just adds the opportunity for goals then, doesn't it? And if we improve our goal out, you know, output and keep the defense tight, then it's the perfect the perfect solution. Yeah, it's more of a, it's more it's more of a headache for the defense. But if you mm. if you've got more threats on the pitch, not just them at Calvert Lewin yeah. with Richarlison pushed out wide, you've got Richarlison coming in. Yeah. Who who do they mark? Who yeah. do they take? You know, it's yeah. it is a it is a headache. It mm. really is a headache. And mm. I could see that coming. I could see uh mm. Carlo Ancelotti making some some subtle changes to the team, give defenders uh, mm. and, and teams defenses nightmares. Definitely. And just finally, Kev, come obviously. Everton doing well. If we get to the summer, what areas would you be looking for them to, to strengthen again? Because obviously last summer, we all knew we needed midfield players, and he brought the core in who's been fantastic. Alan, Hammers, Ben Godfrey came in. So, and Everton have gone up a level. And obviously the improvement to Tom Davis, like you've already said. What do you think Everton would be looking for this summer to again con continue that I, I, improvement? I still think Everton need probably another midfielder. Yeah, mobile. yeah, mobile midfielder, box yeah. to boxer again. Yeah, because remember, we, yeah. we're talking about you've got to be able to rotate people and players. Um, yeah, and a, a, a wide man, I think a wide man who can beat somebody. Yeah, that is. Yeah, Dominic Calvert Lewin will be licking his lips because if you have a wide player who can beat somebody, then the defense are, are, are compromised. And when when a cross yeah. is coming in, whichever side it is. He's heading towards goal, and mm. the defenders are heading towards their own goal. Then you're in business, yeah, yeah. and 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 probably another striker. I know mm. Moise Keane is 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 mm. doing so well at PSG. Might be some business that yeah. Carlo Ancelotti does, 
But if you don't have yeah. him, then obviously you probably have to uh, go in the transfer market and get another one because yeah. somebody who could, who yeah. could, you know, help Dominic Calvert Lewin. Again, it's more threats. The more threats Everton have is the more games Everton's going to win. Outstanding and absolutely, Kev, absolutely. And finally, oh, well, you touched on it before, but today Everton have been um, granted plan and permission by the local city council. It's got to go to national government, but all the signs are really good. I mean, that's a big step in Everton's development oh, as well, isn't step. it? Yeah. Yeah. Listen, I know there's a lot of work yeah. gone into getting it to this stage. Yeah. So, you know, all yeah. I could say is congratulations to everybody at, uh, at the football club mm. who have worked so hard to get mm. it to this position. We know it has to go another level up and then it gets rubber stamped. Yeah. But once it gets really yeah. done at a local level, there shouldn't be much problems at, uh, at the level above. Um, it's, it's a tremendous uh, opportunity for Everton now. They've got the right manager, uh, which has been a question mm. in the past. Yeah. You know, they've, they're, they're building yeah. a team to be proud of, which is important. Yeah. I know there's a few yeah. steps to go to get the team where it needs to be. The Baz, yeah. we've had a few false dawns, Baz, haven't we? We've had a few <laughs> false dawns. Just a few. But with Don Carlo and Big Dunk and everybody in the background, you know, pushing it in the right direction, um, I'm sure when that stadium is ready and open, there'll be a team fitting to grace that pitch and uh, make Evertonians proud, I'm sure. What a way to finish. Kev, listen, thank you so much for taking time out. I know you're absolutely up the ball at the moment, but lovely to talk to you. And uh, yeah, talk about your record, finally gone, but just part of the club now. Just part of the club, that's it. Hey, listen, I, 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 I could sit down in the exclusive club now and, and watch the games. I could chill out a little bit now. <laughs> I, they're not rolling me out every year. <laughs> Probably that's what that's what Carragher wanted to uh, allude to. It was it, yeah. it ended up being a little bit painful, to be honest, because, <laughs> you know, that was a long time ago. That yeah. was before my son was born and now yeah. my son's a, pr a pro. <laughs> you know, me, the eldest son, so... How's he doing? How's he doing? Yeah, he's, he's, had had he's, he's back. He's, he's, he's yeah. back uh, on his feet. He's, he's doing so he, wa he wants to Excellent. come back quick, but they, they're having to calm him down a little bit. But nice. you know, he wants to. He wants to come nice. back, but he will, he'll be back. He'll be fine. Yeah. But um, yeah. what 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 an, what an incredible opportunity for Everton to move into that ground and yeah, he's, he's, he's superb. Yeah. He's super. Yeah. I'm proud. I'm very proud. Yeah. As sad a day as it'll be when we leave Goodison, it is. Sadly, we do need to move to to keep the progress going, and it will look lovely on the uh, the banks of the Royal Blue Mersey there, that stadium. Oh, I can't wait! I can't <laughs> wait to go. Yeah, I can't wait to go. It's going to yeah. be brilliant, absolutely yeah. brilliant, and and fitting yeah. for the football club because it is it is a sign of progress for sure. Definitely, Kevin. Listen, thank you very much for taking time today, and no problem, to Baz. Up the toffees, you know that. Definitely, definitely. Big thanks to Kevin there. Make sure you give the video a thumbs up, subscribe if you haven't, and if you want more videos, join us on Patreon. See you later.